Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the HGLRC, and I believe this is the XJB F425. They have quite interesting long names for these guys, but let's just take this out. And now this is a little 20 by 20 micro stack, a little micro tower for 3 and 4 inch and possibly 5 inch builds. Just comes in this tiny little box. This is literally all you get. Um, really simple. I, I kind of like that though. It keeps it simple and keeps the cost down. And in there you get a bunch of different uh, nylon mounting hardware. But pay attention that these are M2. The holes in these boards are M2, not M3. So they're not going to fit your standard frames or standard um, spacers. So just be aware of that. But some of the newer frames that are uh, 3 and 4 inch are coming with M2. But just make sure you're aware of that. And now this combo comes together, I believe it's about $50 or so, and it comes with a little F4 flight controller, which you can see here, hopefully, once that focuses. Got that big old F chip on there. Looks huge on this little 20 by 20 board. And then if we flip it over on the back, you can see we do also have an OSD built in, Betaflight OSD, so that's awesome. Even on this tiny little board, they still squeeze it in there. And you can see these, hopefully, these little receptacle pins because on the 4-in-1, here's the 4-in-1 ESC, and it says this is rated for 25 amps, but with how small it is and um, the size of the FETs on here, I'm not sure if I'd trust this for a 5-inch build. You know, it's probably going to have some twisting and dipping at that high of current, so I'd really suggest staying 3 or 4-inch with these tiny guys for right now. But you can see it looks like a pretty well thought out board. I do like uh, that they didn't go with through holes. They just went with pads. I personally like that to solder to. And then here we have the pins to go up into the flight controller. And they are offset. They're not directly in the center. So there's only one way they can connect properly. And have the holes line up. So you can see that there. They're just going to connect. And I assume, yep, yep, the uh, standoffs they provided are the perfect length. Um, to space those guys apart. And taking a look at the ESC, I'm not sure, I don't see any voltage regulators anywhere and I don't see any mention of anything on the pads. So I don't think this has any 5 or 12 volt outputs. I'm not sure uh, what these pads up here, these tiny ones are, although they're probably just VBAT out. But on the bottom here you have your battery uh, or battery pads. I wish they would have made these larger. You can see the ESC pads are the exact same size, if not larger than the battery pads. So I wish these could have been larger. I know there's not much room there, but perhaps make them just a little bit wider. But hopefully that shouldn't be an issue to solder to. And then on the flight controller up here, you can see we just got our 5 volt back on there. And I believe this guy. Once again, it just plug. It must take full battery voltage. It just takes uh, plug straight into the form on ESC, and then this supplies, I believe, five volts out to the VTX and um, five volts out to the camera. I think you can see down here we have our uh, pads for five volt PPM and S bus. So you hook up your receiver there. It also does have a DSMX and 3.3 volt pads right here for you Spectrum guys if you're interested in that. Here we have the little boot button, so it's not one of the full size nice ones, it's one of those really tiny hard to click ones, but you know, once again, space is at a premium, as well as this is a cheaper board, so really not that sad about that. And over here we have an extra 5 volt and ground pad there, and here we have some 5 volt and LED pads there, I assume those would be addressable through those ports and that UART. And then we just have the main USB connection there. So there's just a real quick overview of the board. So let me get this installed into a quad that I'll be building. I'll be using this on a 4-inch quad. And I'll get back to you after uh, building it up just to know how easy it was to set up. And then I'll be flying it around and see if it blows up. So let's get to that. Alright, so I got the HGLRC F425 installed into my 4-inch here. Hopefully you can just see it right there. And I have been flying this um, for a few weeks now. You probably might have seen the line of sight and FPV video that I did of this. There will be links down below um, in the description if you want to check out how this guy flies. But overall, it just flies really nice. And of course, you know, the power and everything is going to be coming from the motors and props. But in terms of the tunability of this, it flies really well. Pretty much a lot of the settings I just left stock. I'm not having any problems running Betaflight 3.2 on here. 
course it does have the Betaflight OSD in there so you can do all that if you want. However, I just sort of leave most of that off and still just use the camera voltage OSD as I'm just more used to that. Um, so really the only thing that I think could make this um, 20 by 20 4 in 1 stack a little bit better would be the implementation of a current sensor so you can get the current information but that the shunt resistor for that really just probably is too big to fit on these boards um, they're just really crammed for space already so it it really is a good board and if you're doing anything 4 inch or below I think this is a very good option to look at they have a couple different versions of this but this stack has been working perfectly for me as for running on 5 inch even though it does save uh, 25 or 20 28 amps. Um, I really would not recommend running it on 5 inch. It's just because just going to be too much power for it, and everything's just going to be just fully saturated, and it's not going to be very good. And you're probably going to have um, some dipping issues, and you know you might even blow it, even though you're not exceeding the amp rating. So I'd say 4 inch or below to stick on 20 by 20. Didn't have any issues with my battery leads um, since I zip tied them down, ripping these little pads off. So that worked well. So just make sure you make sure you secure these. Um, since these are a little unprotected out the side here. But other than that, it all works fine and I definitely recommend this and be using it again. So there will be a link down below to Banggood if you're interested in this and you want to see more about it. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.